Bullshit. Uh, Today's show is going to focus on a couple of main themes that I want to focus on at length. Show is brought to you by audible.com. I don't know if you use audible.com. If you don't, you really need to give it a try. I've been an audible user for, oh, it's pretty long. I'm going to just guess five years. But I love reading. I love information. I love content, creating it and consuming it. So years ago, I had decided to try Audible. And what I found about Audible is this, it's, and this is just my personal opinion, is there are certain books that are great for Audible based on you. And then there are other books that are great for the Kindle based on you. And there are probably even other books that are best to still be held in the hand in a tactile way. For me, I really do enjoy listening to podcasts and listening to audiobooks of all kinds. I think that whenever you have podcast-wise, I really like to get uh, the Gary V type shows or shows like the No Bullshit Marketing Show where you're getting information and some humor and some slice of life. With the audiobooks, I've found that a lot of times uh, a, a, a good business book that I probably wouldn't get to, I can pop on there and still get to that. And I'll be reading two business books at the same time then because I'll be reading the one I'm actually reading and I'll be listening to the other one. Another thing is whatever your passion is, my passions, as you might have known if you're a regular listener, are definitely sports, specifically basketball and coaching basketball, but also the NFL and other sports, but also music and entertainment. And when you get a book that's really like that kind of book for you, um, for instance, a book about the 1985 Chicago Bears, I can listen to that very quickly because I'm hearing the stories about a team that from Generation Xers is everyone knows. If you're in Generation X, you know the Chicago Bears from 85. You remember Fridge. You remember Peyton. You remember Ditka. So that's a great book to listen to on Audible because you don't need to remember the facts. You don't need to dog ear page 82 where it talks about this or that. You just need to listen. So that's why I was passionate about when we landed Audible as a sponsor for the No BS Show, because you can get a free audiobook download and 30-day free trial by going to audibletrial.com slash no BS. Try a book that you like and download it for free today, audibletrial.com slash no BS, over 180,000 titles to choose from for your iPhone, Android, Kindle, or MP3 player. If you know anything about the No Bullshit Marketing Show, you know that Mass Solutions is the company I'm the CEO of, and what we do is we focus on real marketing, true integrated marketing, no bullshit marketing. Everyone has been a bullshit marketer, including me, and from time to time I slip, and I go back to being a bullshit marketer. So that's the first thing. It's not punitive. When I do workshops across the country, I'm often worried because when I come in, I think people are like, what's this guy going to come in and say I'm a bullshitter? And I opened the, the whole workshop up by saying, I've been there. I've been a bullshit marketer and I'll slip and I'll be a bullshit marketer again. None of us wants to be a bullshit marketer, yet it happens a lot. And bullshit marketing happens because it's so easy to get pulled into the cool stuff of marketing. Cool stuff of marketing could be social media marketing with what the actual Twitter posts look like or the Facebook live promotion. The cool stuff of marketing could be creating a video. It could be having a promotional event. The cool stuff of marketing could be writing the message, some kind of really great story you're going to tell. The cool stuff of marketing could be doing a PR pitch. So that stuff enthralls people, and they then go to that too quickly. And I saw that throughout my career. I was fortunate to have a lot of mentors who took me along for the ride, and I was able to do turnarounds and be part of leadership teams at turnarounds at at many companies, and then part of multi-billion dollar company where I was able to do a lot of things that the company was going through major growth. So I was used to doing it with mirrors and not having a budget, and then I got a chance to do it with a modest budget, then I got a chance to do it with a huge budget, all in C-suite type positions. And what was one of my takeaways? One of my takeaways was I would be out with friends when I was at UPMC and had this huge budget and we were doing such amazing things, building this great brand. It was an incredible team. Uh, There were 43,000 employees. They all mattered. And there was a couple hundred of senior leadership people that just were awesome. And we had tremendous leadership at the top with Jeffrey Romoff and John Paul. But when I would go out and talk to friends, I would say, 
to myself, not to them, I think, why does their marketing suck? He's the CEO of Company X that does $200 million a year in sales, and his marketing blows. Why is that? And I began to think about it, and I said, you know, I'm eventually going to I'm eventually going to fix that. I I knew that I had the entrepreneurial spirit and I knew that even though I had done these big companies and been in the C-suite and had these great titles, great offices, all the perks that you want when you're 25 and 30 and, uh, and that stuff mattered. You know, (laughs) I wasn't, I wasn't as mature as I am now. So all that stuff mattered. And of course the money was with there too, but I kept seeing that everybody just didn't know how to do real marketing. I thought, well, is it because the company that I'm at and the past couple companies I've been at had the budget and I wasn't sure, but I knew that I wanted to try to find out. And then I remember reading something after I started mass solutions. I thought, boy, that really applied to why I started mass solutions. And I wish I had thought of it. And it's from Steve Ells, the founder of Chipotle. And he said, the reason I started Chipotle is sustainably raised foods should not be an elitist pursuit. Sustainably raised food should not be an elitist pursuit. It's something everyone should be able to have. And I thought, no bullshit marketing should not be an elitist pursuit. It's something every company should be able to have. And that's the why behind Mass Solutions. When I read Simon Sinek's great book, Start With Why, I thought he was halfway there for a marketing firm when what we do with our clients because the first question you have to ask is, what's your why? What's your reason for being? Well, my reason for being, I just told you at Mass Solutions, was I wanted to do no bullshit marketing through an entrepreneurial spirit where I could build a team of people who wanted to stay and be a part of this team because we were doing creative problem solving. And that would make us different because we would be no bullshit marketers because we'd be solving problems. I sat on the other side of the table and so many firms came in and said, we'll make the greatest video for UPMC. We'll change this for Duquesne University. We'll do this for MVH. And it wasn't about the creative. You can't do creative for creative's sake. It's about defining the problem so knowing what the hell you're trying to solve and building a plan to solve it, work on that plan and solving it. So that's why we started Mass Solutions because our why was we wanted to have a no bullshit marketing company that created bold solutions, no BS. And we wanted it not to be an elitist pursuit. But guess what? Starting with why is only half the battle because Simon Sinek's book, Starting with Why, your why or reason for being, sometimes your customers don't give a shit about what your reason for being is. Do you think most of my customers really care that that's why I started the company? Yeah, they might think it's a pretty cool story. Yeah, that's pretty cool. That Dave, he's not a bad guy. But at the end of the day, they want me to solve their messaging and marketing problem on time and on budget. So I thought, wow, that Simon Sinek book is awesome and Everybody should read that that's at the top of a company. But for our company, there's, we got to tell people you have two whys that you have to answer, those two why questions. And the second why is your customer's why or reason for buying. And the answers to your two why questions aren't going to be exactly the same. Now, you better hope they're at least pretty close to the same. Because if you're way over to the left and your customers are way over to the right, eh, you're going to have a problem. But if they're close enough that they're something can be coalesced, you need to crystallize that into one big idea, one memorable message or theme that makes an emotional impact on your target audiences. So on this show, we say, whether it's for you personally or your company, what's the big idea? And the answer to the what's the big idea question comes from the answer to two earlier questions, your why or reason for being and your customer's why, their reason for buying. If you do that, and you answer that question, what's your big idea, by answering those other two whys first, you now can be a no-bullshit marketer. And that's why I put people on the spot on this show, talented people, successful people, fantastic people, and sometimes that question, they struggle with it because they almost always have the first part of the why, the first why, their reason for being. But putting those together 
And answering both whys answers that what's the big idea question. And that's what Mass Solutions is built on, is helping people understand that first you've got to answer those two whys, which answers your big idea question. You've got to define your target audiences and do hit the bullseye targeting. Hit the bullseye targeting is really truthfully challenging your assumptions, looking at your current data, looking at the market, and clearly defining your target markets, and then finding out what they want and why. And that's done through marketing intel. And that's important. And many clients that we talk to, they want to get to that creative solution real quick. Let's get to help me with my message. Help me with my message, Dave. We can do that. Will you let us do our process? Will you let us make sure you've clearly defined your target markets and that you're hitting the bullseye? Will you make sure you've answered the two whys and then answered what's your big idea? But will you also let us go out and talk to your key stakeholders internally, to your employees, to your referral sources? And every company has referral sources, not just healthcare. As soon as I say referral sources, people say, oh, he's from healthcare, he's talking about it. No. We work a tremendous amount in business-to-business marketing. And there are referral sources for every one of our clients. There are referral course, uh, sources for our education clients. There are referral sources for our B2C clients. So let us do the marketing intel that talks to your employees, talks to your leadership team, talks to your referral sources, talks to current customers, hopefully talks to past customers. And we do that. And you combine that marketing intel and the hit the bullseye targeting, answer the what's your big idea question, then you're going to come up with, we're going to come up with together with you creative solutions to your marketing challenges. It's the No BS Marketing Show. I'm Dave Mastovich, your host. We went off the reservation a little bit without a guest because we like to do that from time to time just to make sure that we're hitting on some key themes. And today's key theme is the bullshit around social media marketing and how it's still not fully embraced by most C-suite people and most entrepreneurs. We spent a lot of time talking about that. And we rolled it into what's the big idea and what was Mass Solutions' big idea, what's our reason for being and what's our customer's reason for buying. And we talked a little bit about how you can apply those same tools and tactics and tips to be a no-bullshit marketing company. And since we're talking about CXOs or the C-suite and the importance of embracing social media, and we since we always have a tool, we ask the guests, tell us your tool that you think can help our audience. The tool today that we'll discuss is LinkedIn. We can talk about the power of LinkedIn for multiple shows, and trust me, I'm going to because we need to. So LinkedIn itself can be 10 different shows where we spend on 10 different tips. But the tool today that we're going to talk about is one specific part of LinkedIn and how that part is important for CEOs, entrepreneurs, marketing and messaging professionals, and really anyone. Now, here's the thing. I have one CEO friend of a large, large company. And you go on LinkedIn, you see his name, you see his title, you see a little bit about his company. You have no picture, no bio, no education, and he has two connections, one of which is me. Makes me feel really good. I think this uh, guy is big time, and he's running a multi-million dollar company, Big multi-million, almost billion. And he only has two connections and I'm one of them. So the egotistical side of me thinks, yeah, that's cool. But then the marketing side of me says, no, that's crazy. The LinkedIn bio for you as a C-suite person, CEO, CFO, chief marketing officer, chief operating officer, VP of marketing, VP of operations, human resources director, That LinkedIn bio tells a lot about your company. The LinkedIn bio is often the first or second impression that people, prospective employees, customers, strategic partners, will have of your organization. Think about that. Your LinkedIn bio is often the first, and if not the first, usually at least the second impression that people, prospective employees, customers, strategic partners will have of your organization, yet many CXOs and entrepreneurs barely focus on leveraging their bio. As the CEO or a senior leader, you are a key brand ambassador for your company. 
LinkedIn gives you the opportunity to tell both your personal story and your company's brand story at the same time. You can tell people what you're all about and what your company's all about. Why fumble that opportunity? Remember, LinkedIn is one of the highest ranked sites on Google. When people search your name, they're going to see your LinkedIn profile come up. It's going to come up first or second. If you're not on LinkedIn, then it's not going to come up first or second. But if you even put up a shitty profile, and there's a lot of shitty profiles, it's going to come up probably first, at least second, maybe third. So it's important that your bio do you and your company justice. An incomplete LinkedIn profile gives the impression that you and your company aren't detail-oriented, aren't serious about social media, which in today's world means you aren't serious about branding. Now, you probably don't want to admit that, and maybe since you don't have a LinkedIn profile, you won't even know what a podcast is and hear me, but let's just say for the sake of argument that I've got a CXO out there who heard this and doesn't agree and thinks, I don't need to spend much time on LinkedIn for those four reasons I mentioned earlier. In today's world, that means you aren't serious about branding. That's right. Not updating and maintaining your LinkedIn profile makes you and your company look bad. You might not want to admit it, Mrs. CEO or Mr. CFO, but it's true. The interesting thing is that many companies will take the time to put a bio of their senior leaders on the company website. And what that means is it's not about you not having the bio written or about you not wanting the bio to be out there. Because I know that's what some people do. I don't want people to really know much about me, so I don't do anything on LinkedIn. So if you put it on the website, that means it's already out there. It's on the internet. So then what's the reason to not put one of the largest search engine places, Google, LinkedIn, your bio? Come on, man. Get with the program. Update your LinkedIn bio. That's step number one to start leveraging LinkedIn. Thanks for your time today. Thanks for joining us for the No Bullshit Marketing Show. Visit massolutions.biz slash bold solutions for show notes, plus additional marketing and messaging resources. Sign up for light reading. You'll receive timely, valuable ideas to improve your marketing and transform your message. It really is light, intended to be read in two minutes or less. And it just might trigger bright ideas for you. To sign up again, visit massolutions.biz. And remember, ask yourself, what's the big idea? And build your story around the answer. It's all about bold solutions.